So after waiting three weeks, I got my arcade machine in, and I am ready to assemble this thing. Let's get straight into it. Sugar! So this isn't going to be like an unboxing type video. You can see here that I already took this out of the box and we have all of our pieces here all stacked up. There's only 12 pieces of wood so this seems like a basic assembly. Um, the only issue that I have is that the manual that comes with this isn't even for the arcade machine I bought. So he sent me a bar top arcade machine manual and in the manual it just says they're all set up the same way no matter the size. So there's a couple of pieces in here that aren't really explained, like the, uh, the small batons that hold up the uh, buttons and joystick plank of wood here. So I kind of had to figure that out. I mean, it's, it's a little self-explanatory, but you do need a little bit of know-how to, to kind of figure out where all this is going. So I, I can only say if you buy this, don't expect to really learn anything from the manual. You're probably going to wing this whole thing just like I did. But hopefully when you're watching my video, you can learn from what I'm doing and at least get a, a few tips if you end up buying from this guy. So let's get started here. The, the first thing that we're going to notice is that we only have 12 pieces of wood. So that's pretty simple. Uh, the, the best thing you can do is lay everything down flat try to see how everything's gonna fit together before you get started on everything and um, from there you know disassemble what you did and start putting together that's the first thing that I can recommend that way you know how all this all the pieces are gonna fit here um, so we're gonna start with the routed side of the arcade machine which is obviously the only two sides that we have you're gonna notice that the arcade machine is numbered. You're gonna see number one, number six, number eight, you know, uh, number five, number seven. And there's a bunch of batons that came included with this and you're basically just playing a game of matchup. So you're gonna put say the number two baton on the number two slot of the routed side of the arcade machine and so on and so forth for all the other batons. I will say though that this guy screwed me and failed to give me a number four and a number five baton. So each each side of your arc, arcade machine gets a corresponding baton. So I got the four and five for one side, but I did not get the four and five for another side. So I had to make my own baton, which wasn't a big deal, but I, I didn't want to go through the process of writing this guy and say, hey, you messed up, give me my two pieces of wood, and then I have to wait like a week for two pieces of wood to come in or whatever would have happened. So. I just, you know, I bit the bullet, I made my own, and here I am. So the next thing that we're gonna do here is fit all of our batons into place before we glue them in. That's right, uh, this kit actually says you have to wood glue all of these in, and, and let me tell you, the wood glue sucks. I, I don't recommend it. If, if you can do it, if you have the patience to do it, go ahead, but uh, I put all these in and I had nothing but problems. I clamped them in, I put weight on them, I let them sit for an hour and the machine just kept falling apart. So I ended up taking a nail gun to this bitch and just <laughs> nailing them all in. And let me tell you, it's so much better. The machine's so much sturdier the way that I did it. But I did come into a few problems with splitting some of the pieces of wood, the batons. Um, but you know, I'm not overall worried about it because it's, it's what's going to be on the inside of the machine and I can always make new batons. So after the wood glue dries, go ahead and match up all your other pieces that came with the machine. And, and after your sides, your marquee and your speaker pieces, I think there's only five pieces that you have to figure out. And they're all roughly the same size. It's really easy to figure out. You'll notice that the front of the arcade machine has a lip on it. There's obviously a large piece in the front, smaller piece in the bottom, small piece on the very underneath of the machine and then three pieces on the back. Super simple, um, it, it wasn't hard to figure out at all, which is why I didn't really have any video here of me putting these together. Plus, I didn't have anybody to hold the camera for me. So next, uh, we're, we're gonna put in our wall mounting bracket, which is honestly very easy, uh, but you do need help. I'd recommend having somebody there to help you with this part. So this is all on personal preference. There isn't actually a pre-routed hole for your wall mount to go into because it's gonna go by the angling that you want, the size of the TV that you want. So all you do is strap the wall mount onto the TV, 
put the TV in there, figure out where you want it, make some marks, and nail it in. Like in my case, nail it in. I didn't bother using the wood glue. But uh, after you have that in there, uh, everything is pretty much a cakewalk from here. We can start setting up the buttons. So the buttons all came in from Amazon. There's actually a lot going on in this package here. Um, you know, I have, I have 16 action buttons, two player one and player two buttons, two coin buttons, uh, two encoders, uh, two joysticks, and it, there's just, a, you know, a lot of assembly with this part. This is probably one of the most tedious parts of this build so far. So I'm going to show you how to put your buttons into place here. It's actually pretty simple. I did two already just because I had to figure out how they were going to go myself. So you just untwist one of the buttons, however you're going to style this, whatever color, whatever button you choose first. So you untwist the uh, fuse, I guess I'll call it. It's really the LED portion of the light. And you're also going to twist off this cap here and put it into the board. Twist the cap back on, which obviously tightens it up and makes it so the button will stay in place. And once you have that done, you can put your little LED back into place and twist it again to lock it into place. And it's really as simple as that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these and then I'll get back to you when I'm finished. And I'll just, you know, show you guys a couple of pictures of what it looks like when it's finished. So now that I have all the buttons done here, I need to start wiring them. And let me tell you, this took a long time. The instructions that came with these were kind of crappy, just like the ones for the arcade cabinet. Uh, it does tell you how to wire it, you know, positive, negative, where everything goes. But it also tells you, oh, well, if one of your LEDs doesn't work, sw swap one of the negatives for the positives. It, it makes absolutely no sense to me. It, it pretty much is like, hey, set up this way, and if it doesn't work, undo everything we just said just do it the opposite way and it wasn't very helpful so when i wired this up for the first time according to the manual i think i had seven buttons that weren't lit up and those seven buttons i had to reverse and do you you can see here i have the the black on the red side and the red on the black side i had to swap those and put black on black red on red makes no damn sense to me but that's what i had to do and that's how i got it working which taking those things off after they're plugged in was a pain in the ass so this part you might have a little bit of trouble with but it is pretty easy to do so just you know follow along here and i'll show you what you got to do so it's pretty simple you're going to notice that we have a blue wire a red wire a single black wire and um one black wire with an extra end on it you know one piece connected to two black wires so you're going to take the single black wire and you're going to connect it to the red side and then you are going to take the blue wire and that's going to connect right in that middle pin over here right in the right in the front of the fuse i'm going to call it i really don't know the technical term for it and then you're going to plug in the red one on the black side And the last one we're gonna do here is this double black wire that's gonna go on the very top of this here. And we're gonna go ahead and do that for all of these. Now remember, like I said, the, the manual was crap. I did them all exactly how I just showed you and I had seven buttons that were out. So I did have to flip flop them around to get the LEDs to start working. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these and we will get back to it. Uh, before we go though, you're gonna see that we have the actual encoder part here. And this is what allows the RetroPie to read the buttons. This is what's gonna plug into the RetroPie itself. Uh, after you're done wiring all these buttons in, the other end has to be plugged into this board. Um, it's numbered on the board K1 through 12, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you're going to wire these in basically 1 through 12. Now, it's very important that if you're doing the player 1 and player 2, both encoders have to be matching on both sides. So you, you can see the one that I just did here is going into the third slot. 
that would mean the corresponding button for player two would have to go into the third spot of the player two controller to get everything working correctly. Otherwise, for example, when you set your buttons on the machine, that third button might register as button four, but on player two, it might register as button seven if you don't have everything matching accordingly, which can make it a pain when you're trying to configure your controls. So make sure everything you do corresponds with the first encoder and the second encoder. They have to be matching. And this is what it looks like when I have them all wired up. Looks like a hot mess, but I am proud of myself for getting it done. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill this board back into the arcade machine, and we're gonna see if this is running and how it looks. So I'm really digging how it looks right now. Uh, everything's nice and clean. I still, obviously, I'm going to have to take this apart later when I want to paint it. But uh, I had to make sure I had everything running right and everything running smooth before I even start the painting process. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn the arcade machine on so you guys can see how the LED lights light up. Beautiful. I love the way that this looks. So before we go, I am going to go into depth on one more thing, just how I have my arcade machine set up. So I have a power strip on the floor of the arcade machine, and obviously the plug is going through the little hole in the back so I can get power. I have the Raspberry Pi plugged into that power strip, and I also have the speakers from above plugged into the power strip as well with the audio jack going into the RetroPie. Uh, from there, the two encoders are both plugged into the first and second port of the Raspberry Pi. And I also made a little mount here for the Raspberry Pi for it to stay in place because I didn't want to make a shelf or just have it sitting on the floor so it can wiggle around and whatnot. So it's actually really easy to make. I just took one of the batons that uh, I made from earlier and I drilled a screw into it because it just so happens that my Raspberry Pi has a thread on it so I can mount it onto things. So I just put a bolt through it, mounted it onto the bolt, and then I drilled the bolts into the back of the cabinet. And here we go, we just have our little stand for it. So it's pretty easy and it's in a nice area, but I still have tons of room in this cabinet. So I think if I ever decide to upgrade, I can definitely fit a PC in here if I wanted to, if I wanted to play more in-depth and graphically inclined games. So I think this is it for now on the assembly of my cabinet. There's still much more I have to do. I have to uh, sand down some of the nail spots that I made there and uh, fill it in with some putty and sand it down again after that and paint it. And I still have to do the marquee, cut some plexiglass, there's tons to do. So there will be some future updates here. But this is just some of the basic stuff that I had to do to set this up. and. I just wanted you guys to get a feel of what I had to go through going through LP1 Customs and buying this kit through Amazon. That way you guys can decide whether you want to do this or don't want to do this and decide whether it's worth your time. So if you guys like content like this, you guys want me to keep it up with the updates, just let me know and uh, leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe. I'll catch you guys later. Adios.